All right guys, so Louisa and I went fishing yesterday inshore here in Crystal River and we caught just about everything under the sun because it's almost springtime now. So we caught a bunch of redfish, trout, sheephead. We caught some mangrove snappers, Spanish mackerel. And I wanted to take the time to show you guys how to fillet some of these different types of fish. And the reason I'm gonna show you on a few different types of fish is because all fish are different. You fillet them all just a little bit different because they have different body types. Some have big heavy scales, some have almost no scales at all. Um, some have bigger rib cages that you have to go around. But what we have here is a redfish, trout, and some sheephead. So if you take a look at this redfish here, this redfish has some really big scales on it. Like this scale right here that I just flicked off that redfish. Redfish have these because it helps protect them from the rocks and the oyster bars and the other things they live around. And that's actually really hard. That does, you, you don't go through that real easy. That's a hard, heavy duty scale that protects the flesh of this fish. This trout that's just swimming over the grass flats, it has almost no spots on it at all. It's actually crazy that that one came in with almost no spots. But these trout here have very small scales. You can barely see them there. There's little scales and they're not hard at all to cut through. So it's very easy to slice into a trout. So we're gonna go ahead and show you guys how to clean a couple of these different fish since there's different types of fish that are built differently. And with this redfish, I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in. What I do with the redfish, so I usually come up top here, maybe flick a scale or two out of the way so that I can get the tip of my knife in. And the knife that I'm using, just so you guys can see that as well, it's the Bubble Blade seven inch tapered flex fillet knife. The reason I'm using this knife is because it's a high carbon stainless steel. They stay strong, uh, or sorry, they stay sharp longer and they are a very strong knife, but they do have some good flex to them. I like a knife with flex and that's where this one comes into play. And uh, again, we're gonna go ahead and start right here and just uh, work our way down the fish this way. And you can see I'm running into some resistance on those scales. These scales are just, <laughs> just catching up in the blade of the knife. All these are gonna come off, and uh, that does make it a little harder to get through it, so you will want a sharp knife like this. And then after I make a cut here, I'm kinda cutting around the stomach area. We don't wanna cut into the guts. And then if you can get a good look here, I, I'll just come right down the belly. All I'm doing is just kinda setting myself up for how I wanna fillet this fish. Look at all those gigantic scales just coming off. That's one thing about a redfish and some of these other fish that live on the oyster bars. They get those thick scales to protect themselves. And uh, there we go. I'm in far enough there. That's all the farther I want to go in, maybe an inch or two. I'll come up to the top. I'm going to make a little turn here and head straight down the backbone. Again, those scales are a pain in the butt on the redfish. Go ahead and clean straight down the back. I'm just running, I'm just feeling the bones all the way down. And I'm trying to slow down for you guys because I'm used to filleting real fast. But uh, you come in here and if you see, if I, well, I'm lifting this meat up right in here, running my knife along the edge of the bones, all the way up, right over that backbone. So I'm all the way through that now. And on the bottom side, I did the same thing. I don't know how well you can see in there, Normally I would leave the fillet attached, makes it easier to fillet off sometimes, but for the sake of the size of this cleaning table that I have, I'm going to go ahead and detach it. And I do like, I'm going to show you a couple different ways you can do this, but I do like going over the backbone, or the rib cage I should say, sorry. I do like going over that rib cage with fish that have heavy duty bones and just, you know, thicker rib cages because there's no sense in just dulling your knife and cutting through those bones for no reason. So what I've done here now is that filet is completely detached. There's no meat left on here. Inside this portion, I'm gonna cut this here just so I can show you. Inside this portion is the stomach lining. You don't want that anyways, you're gonna cut that out. So if you go over the ribs, you're just saving your knife from dawling. And uh, right here's that filet that we pulled off that redfish and this is a 27 inch redfish. So that's the maximum size that you can have a redfish that you can keep. What I'm doing right now is I'm just feeling my way down the meat of this fish and the, uh, the skin that's on the backside of this redfish. And there's your filet, comes completely off of the uh, skin. The ribs are out, so I do not have to cut these ribs out anymore because they're gone. But I don't want the bloodline, so I'm gonna bring the knife right down that bloodline and there may be a bone or two still in that center area there where the rib or the uh, where the backbone was. Okay, so I cut right down the middle of the fish here. I just pulled that bloodline out. That's gonna go in this bucket over here where we throw some stuff away. 
All right, the next fish I'm gonna show you how to clean is a sheephead. It's very similar to a redfish. It does have some thicker scales, but not as bad as the redfish, that's for sure. And uh, we're gonna start at the top, just like we did with the redfish. And I can just start going straight through this because these scales are definitely not as bad as a redfish. I don't have to take the time to flick them out and all that other stuff. And we'll go straight down the stomach the same way and then down the back. The reason that I'm doing this is just helping me make sure that I don't lose any, any meat at all. I could just go straight down this fish if I wanted to, but there's a backbone that's a little higher, so if my knife is positioned like this, going down the backbone, it's gonna lose a little bit of meat that's gonna be sitting below it on either side. So I like doing this so I just don't lose anything. I like, if I'm gonna kill a fish, I wanna get every bit of meat out of it that I can to eat. All right, you see how easily that came off of there? It's very nice, and that's the reason you have a really good knife like this too. It just helps fly right through this meat. There we go. Same deal as the other one. Then I come down here. That one is gonna go a little bit quicker than the redfish. We're doing a little less explaining because it is similar to the last fish we cleaned. And then again, I'm just kind of going straight down, level with the skin, level with the cleaning board, and taking the meat off of the skin. And that's all that I did there. And then you have the skin left. This is the skin, no meat on it. Come back here. Again, the rib cage is still in here. I went around the rib cage on this one. Okay, there's some bones right in here. You can kind of see them lift up, and I'm kind of hitting them with my knife, and they're going right down that bloodline. So we're gonna take the bloodline and that center line of bones out all at the same time. There it is, it's gone. And I will come back on this sheep head here and I will get it a little closer because they do have a real thick area of red that runs all the way down. I and mean, that doesn't taste that great. You probably won't notice it that much when it's fried and that's why I fry a lot of fish. But I'm gonna, I will come back and clean that up in the kitchen a little bit and take the rest of that red off. But this is just one of those fish that you can't avoid having that extra stuff on there because that's just the way that they're made. Not the bulk of it out. And here, actually, I have a little bit of stomach lining left that I missed. So we, you always want to cut that out because that doesn't taste good. Just take that straight out of there. No bones left in here at all. Okay, give it a quick rinse and uh, put it in the bag. Okay, so we filleted up the redfish and the sheephead and you guys saw that they had some pretty thick scales. This trout here has almost no scales at all. They have very, very little small scales. Like if you see if I run the knife on the back side of it, I start pulling the scales off. It's one way you can scale the fish actually. And you know what, since I already started doing that, I'm gonna show you on this one. If you wanted to get it prepared for baking or even throwing on the grill, you can leave the scales on, but a lot of people take them off. You can use the back of the knife. You just come up the fish like this, and you can scale them. This fish now is completely scaled. So this is what the scales on a trout look like. Real small, thin scales. This is a, uh, and, and I'm not doing a perfect job on it, but this here is a trout that I just scaled one side of. I'll show you what you can do if you did decide to scale it and you want to throw it on the, uh, in the oven or something to bake it. You can go straight down, just like I did on those other fish, straight down that backbone. I'm just feeling your way through it on this fish here. Very sharp knife, and I'm using just the tip of this knife when I'm doing this portion of it. It's all the more that's really going in there. It's going straight down, but I mean, you see how it just cuts through this like butter? This type of fish is one of the easiest fish to clean. Trout are very, very easy to clean because of that right there. You're not having to fight with them a lot. You're just kind of making your cuts and then going down it. And I'll finish getting this off of here. And there, if you're gonna pull it off the skin, you would fillet straight down it like that. If you wanted to take this and put it in the oven, I would just take it right off the tail and then I would be done with it. So right after I take it off the tail, I'll be completely done with it, I could throw it in there. I actually don't think I wanna bake it, I do wanna make this part of our fish fry that we're gonna to have tomorrow. So I'm gonna flip that over and I'm gonna take it off the skin. Now that the scales are gone, things may be a little more difficult to get off the skin because it's gonna be easier to rip through it. You don't have as much holding it together, so you really wanna take your time on a fish like this that doesn't have scales and just has real thin skin. Like I said, without those scales on there, 
does make it a little more difficult. And there it is, I think we did a pretty good job of it. And as you can see on this one, I did leave the rib cage in. Trout have small bones, so you do not have to worry about taking the, uh, you know, going around the rib cage on a trout. You can cut right through those little bones. It's going to take a long time to dull your knife with trout. But I'm going to come back, and now I'm going to remove all those bones that we just went around. And there we go. Trout also don't have as much red in their meat, so there's not as much that you have to go back and take out. But there's your trout fillet.